Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in my Backbone Hub building tutorial series. So in this video I will show you step by step how I built this Backbone Hub that is before your eyes. But before we can start building we have to uh, build a mental model of how Backbone Hubs are composed. So let's stop looking at this uh, crazy overcomplicated hub and look at this little model down here. So you can see this model has roughly the same shape and also the same coloring as the hub above that it's based on. So the three components to a backbone hub are one, the splits, which I've colored in green, uh, two, the merges, which are colored in red, and finally the connecting tracks, which connect uh, the splits to the merges. In this case, the left turns are colored yellow. So, um, so three-way hub, each track has to split in two directions, so uh, the direction to the right is the right turn and the direction to the left is the left turn. You can see even though this goes straight, I'm still going to call it the left turn to uh, be unambiguous. So likewise up here, we have the right turn going straight and the left turn. So with this model, you can see there's no detail in the splits or the merges, but what it does show is the shape of the left hand turns. And the left hand turns are really what determine the shape of the overall hub. Now left hand turns are tricky because all three tracks need to cross over one another. Um, so in this case, uh, I'm using a particular common design where we deal with the left hand turns outside of the hub. So you can see that the two tracks cross over each other here and switch over to left hand drive before reaching the middle of the hub. And that makes sure that we can uh, connect up everything nicely. So this is a good design to get started with. So when I'm starting to build, what I'm imagining in my head is the shape of these left-hand turns. I'm not worrying about the splits or merges, just thinking about the left-hand turns and how they're going to fit together. And that helps keep everything straight in my mind. So there's one other thing we have to consider before we start building a hub, and that is the trains that are going to be using the hub. So the two things that matter are the train length and the curve length. So here's the, uh, the train I'm going to be using, or that we'll be using our hub, and we can see that this is a length 5 train. So that's going to be important for mergers. So our mergers have waiting bays, so if we look down here, these waiting bays have to be the length of the train. So this waiting bay is length 5 and it'll, it, it will exactly fit one train in there. So that is no coincidence. The other thing to consider is the curve length. If I start this train, uh, we can see that it's able to reach its maximum speed of 160 kilometers per hour on curves of length 3. But if I force it onto a shorter curve of length 2, we'll see that it has to slow down, and that is something that we don't want to have in our hub. Don't want trains slowing down since they will back up and get in each other's way. And one final thing to note is the doubled up bridges. So I made a video about this, I'll link it in the description in the top right, right there. Um, but these doubled up bridges allow trains to alternate between the different bridges, so although there's a gap in signals, uh, it won't create a bottleneck since trains can alternate. Uh, similarly, in these mergers there are some undoubled up bridges, but we can see that uh, the, the track splits into two different choices, so trains are also expected to alternate here so we don't need to double up the bridges. All right, well, that's enough, uh, that's enough preparation. Let's finally get to building. All right, so here we are in the past, before the hub was built. Now, one thing to note is that currently, uh, all the tracks are covered in signals. Now, normally, I wouldn't put signals on the Backbone Hub on the tracks until after I finish building all of the tracks, but here, I think it'll be useful for people to be able to tell at a glance uh, which way trains are supposed to go. Um, so I'll keep those. Alright, so now where should we begin? Let's begin with the center of the hub, which is going to be the three left-hand turns. So we already have one left-hand turn there, and we'll have the other two left-hand turns bridge over, as you saw before. Um, now we know that we're going to cross over to left-hand drive before we bridge over. So let's, uh, let's start with this left-hand turn. So it'll cross over and then turn left. So we know we have two tracks, two full tracks of trains, so we're going to need four bridges. So we can just go ahead and add them however we want, all next to each other, 
and keep those lined up in sync. And I'll put down some signals so we know which way we're trying to go here. And this will need to be a path-based signal. This one can be a normal signal, normal block signals. All right, so that's our start. So let's continue building in the center. Well, I guess, I guess let's continue with the other side of this hub. So we need to make sure this extends out one tile extra here, one straight tile for our signals. All right, and then the merger will be there, but let's uh, stick at the center. So next, let's do the bridges for the left-hand turn from this side. So we, again, we'll need four bridges. And in this case, we want to cross over this track that we placed before. And we can move this back so we have lots of room. So we'll just, uh, I guess we can move it over a tile. Or let's, let's just keep it straight and aligned. Like so. And then, let's, uh, we'll just keep these bridges continuously doubled up along each other. And then these need to connect back up over here. And we'll just finish up with the uh, approach to the left hand turn that we just built over here. All right. So at this point we can, uh, we can choose what we want to build. The middle is done, you can see the shape clearly. So it's time for either the mergers or the splits. So let's start with the splits just because those are gonna be a bit easier. So for the split, let's take a look. So the left track going to the left is gonna be easy enough. We just need to connect it up. And the right track going to the right will be easy enough as well. Uh, we don't know exactly where it's gonna be, but something like that. It's not hard at all. The hard or tricky part is the middle where we need to have a pair of bridges so that the right track can cross over to the left and the left track can cross over to the right. So we can choose which one's gonna cross over which um, and we'll need two tiles. Well, let's see. So what I'm, what I'm seeing here is uh, I, want, I want this track, the right track going to the left will not have a bridge and I'll have the other side bridge over. So we can see we need two tiles for bridges here. So I'll, I'll put down the bridges so we can see them. And then this can split off like so and we'll need to move back a little bit to have room. Uh, so three tiles, I guess. We'll just make it as compact as possible. And you can see now the right track can go either direction and we'll need the left track to do that as well. And that's pretty simple to hook up. And we can rearrange this a little bit. And on the other side, let's put down those signals so we can see which way we're trying to go. The other side, we'll just join those that pair of synced bridges back together. And put down some signals. Now here, I kind of want these to uh, be closer to each other so it doesn't look so wonky. So that right turn wasn't in the right place good to build from inside to out so we'll keep those next to each other because it looks a bit nicer all right so next let's build the uh, split off over here so we already have the left track to the left so let's remove these tracks and build the uh, left track to the right and then we can just add some bridges over that and then once we're here we can see it's going to be more compact to connect uh, these tracks up like so. So you can see that due to the way that the line is in sync, uh, we end up having to move the track over a tile, but that's easy to fix with this S curve. And then we need the right track to the right, which is easy enough. We'll just split off a track here and we can, uh, we'll figure out how to connect these up here. 
we can get them a little bit closer to each other. And let me make, uh, make these tracks gray. Gray for the coloring scheme. So one question you might have is, uh, where exactly should you branch off? And you can see here, I just picked a spot that's a, a decent amount of what, uh, a decent amount of space away from everything else. And you can see that we could have made this a lot more compact. We probably could have put it all the way up over here. But it's good to uh, give yourself extra room in case you need it. And now the final split. So you don't always need to do it the same way where the bridges are in the middle. So for example, uh, we can do it a little differently here. We can instead have the uh, track split off in the middle. And have the bridges out to the side like this. And let's make sure we have curve length 3 there, and we'll connect that up. So maybe looking at this, it seems a little bit silly to uh, have this branch off to the right just to go to the left. But in a real map, the thing that, will, uh, thing that makes it interesting and affects your choices is the terrain. So perhaps in a real map, the terrain could be better for a configuration like this, or uh, some other configuration. And you can see another thing about this configuration is it lets this left turn be a bit longer. So this is a curve length 5, but if we just did it to the right here, for example, we'd have a curve length of 2. Though we could move the bridges over, and then we'd have a curve length of 3. There's a lot of different ways to deal with it, but maybe uh, maybe that's something you need. Maybe you need a longer curve there, so maybe that's why we could build something like this. Alright, so now it's time for the trickiest part. The merges. So, the merges, one thing you might think is just to do a, uh, a split in reverse, but that doesn't really work. Let me Let me just build that real quickly so we can see what that looks like. Alright, so here is my split in reverse. So this is this is not how to build it, but we'll take a look at why. So the problem here is that uh, if we have a stream of trains coming from, say, this direction on this track, and from the right, or from this direction on this track merging together, we're going to have trains that are alternating back and forth. So one train from here, one train from here. And at low capacities, that's going to be fine, but when you get more and more trains, that alternating back and forth means every train has to stop. So it's sort of like a stop sign, and it's going to create a jam. Now, the way to fix that is with a priority. So we can add, you know, a priority here to say that trains on, you know, trains coming from this track over to the left, uh, they don't have to wait. Trains over here have to wait. But then the problem here is they're just merging together symmetrically, but we're prioritizing this track. So that means if we have a steady stream of trains coming from the left, trains coming from above will just get stuck there forever, having to wait. So it's unfair to those trains. So the solution to this is to make sure that every track has either a priority so if a track has a priority, then we can let a continuous stream of trains through easily. Or if it doesn't have priority, it has to have choice. So here, these trains only have one choice. They can only go into this one, and then they that, that sucks for them. But if they had two choices, you know, they could also... Let me just pretend that uh, they could also go over here. And this track was prioritized too. In this way, trains that are waiting for one track, uh, when, when a train's waiting for one track, a train coming along can go to the other track and wait there too, or maybe it can uh, merge on easily. So you can see trains coming from here can alternate between the two, uh, the two prioritized tracks and fill in any gaps that there would be. All right, so let's, uh, we can see this kind of works, but we're going to need to fit in another track, and this is where it gets tricky. So let's, uh, let's start over again. Alright, so four tracks in, two tracks out, 
The easiest way to build a merger like this is to give the outer two tracks priority. So let's do that. So we can connect up the right track to the right output and the left track to the left output. All right, so now what do we do? So I'm thinking here, what I'm, what I'm looking at here is now we want this track to be able to reach the right and this track to be able to reach the right. So we're gonna need two tracks merging on to this track. So let's pick a spot, doesn't really matter. Let's say right here and we can move it if we need to. And we'll have those two tracks correspond to here and here. And these will be waiting bays. So we'll need them to be long enough to store a train. So five tiles there, five tiles there, and this will be the priority and we'll build that afterwards. All right, and then we'll just leave it like that. Next, we'll do the other side over here. And you can see we don't have enough room for our pair of tracks, so we can move this over a little bit. And now you can see we have room for two waiting bays, one from over here, which will be this one, and one from over here, which will be this one. All right, from here, it's really simple to connect the outer two waiting bays. So this one needs to connect to here. So that's pretty straightforward. And it also needs to connect to here, but we will worry about that in a second. And this one needs to connect to up here. So that's easy as well. All right, now at this point, we have these two waiting bay tracks, which need to cross over each other. And all we need to do, similar to a split is just use some bridges, or I guess one bridge. So I can see here, let's uh, back up that waiting bay a little bit, and we can connect up that path, that track like so. So now this direction has choice. Well, let's, uh, we'll figure out the signal in a sec, but now we need to make sure that the waiting bays are long enough. So you can see this is four tiles and an extra tile, so that's five tiles. So the train will end on this tile right here. And on this side, we need a signal here. And then we do not have enough space. It's one tile too short. So instead of trying to uh, make the waiting bay longer back here, we can just move the split back a little bit. And that can often be easier than uh, moving the waiting bay itself. And we still have length three curve there, so that's good. So you can see one train will be here and it'll end on that tile. So there's no room to put a signal between this tile and the split here, so we're gonna have to use a path-based signal. And we'll just make sure that a train fills up the whole space there. Now for the other track, we can just put our bridge, and that's easy. And I can see that these are definitely long enough. They're a little bit too long actually, but that's okay. So one thing you might notice is that the tracks here actually merge together a little differently. On this side, on the top, they all merge together at a single point. And this is actually, in my opinion, the best way to merge tracks together, since you only need one priority and it's nice and simple to do everything. Though sometimes, I mean, once you have more than two tracks merging in, it's not possible anymore. Now on this side, you can see we have the two choice tracks, the two uh, waiting bays merged together, and then there's one uh, entry signal that merges onto the main line. So this is fine, but it's a little bit trickier to signal because now there are two places where trains can stop in the waiting bay. They can stop here at this signal. So then it'll be up back to this tile one plus four, and that will happen if a train is already here from the other direction. But once that train gets out of the way, the train coming from the top will move forward one tile. So it'll be one tile there and then the next four tiles there. And then this signal is too far back. So we have to make sure that we don't leave an extra signal back there. Now it's also actually just looking at this, it's really easy to convert this side to this side we just uh, move the tracks like this it's really easy but for the sake of example we'll just keep it like it was before now the one thing you don't want to do is have two different 
uh, two different waiting bays merge onto the main line at different points. So e even though like the waiting bay space is long enough, what happens here is this is going to be really awkward to make a priority. So if you put a priority here, if we just do one priority, you can see that uh, the second track that merges on has a really long priority and the first track that merges on just has a really short priority. And if we use uh, two separate priorities, then there's just gonna be a really short priority over here. So that doesn't really work very well. So it's best to keep, uh, just have one, one spot where we merge onto the main line. All right, let's continue with the signals. So this waiting bay needs signals, so let's add those. And we have the same problem here. There's two places where the train can stop, here or here. So the further, the spot further along is this signal, so the train can be back to here. So that's as far as I'll let those signals go. And then this will just be extra space that doesn't get any signals, because we want to make sure that another train doesn't stop and block that split. Right, and then on this side, the waiting bay ends on the bridge. So we'll just put signals up to the bridge. And then here, we'll just have a, uh, we can use exit signals and an entry signal. We can use our block signals instead of a path based signal since these trains will not intersect with those signals and interrupt that block. And finally, we can add the priorities. So these can just be normal priorities with combo signals chaining backwards. Uh, nothing too fancy. One question is though, how long should you make them? And there's no rule set in stone for how long the priority should be. But I guess normally I just sort of build maybe a few tiles longer than the train length. In this case, I guess this is a nine tile priorities. So that looks good, maybe a little bit long. Let's do the other side as well. Have our combo signal, two-way combo signal and chain backwards. And we can just do it to there and have a two-way exit signal chain backwards as well. And that is good. So at this point, this merge is done and it is perfect. So let's continue on to the other two. So in the previous merger, we gave priority to the outermost two tracks, but ideally you wanna give priority to the two tracks which have the most traffic. So maybe since uh, we have a straight track here, maybe we expect the, uh, the trains like to go straight. So maybe those two tracks will have the most traffic and we will prioritize the two straight tracks and give choice to the, uh, these green tracks coming from the right. Uh, just for the sake of example. So to do that, let's just get rid of the right straight track for a bit, and we know later we can have it bridge over the green tracks. And then let's also uh, move over the left straight track so we have a bit more room, and then we can have our waiting bays right there like that. And that's probably going to be going to result in waiting bays that are way too long, but it's easy to shorten them from this end. So at this point, let's see, let's back up this turn a little bit, but we know that um, these two waiting bays, the left one's easy to connect, the right one will be a little bit trickier. So at this point we need to cross over these two tracks. So I have a, a curve length three here, that's gonna be fine. And then uh, we'll go back two tiles like so. So we have enough room over here for a bridge. And then we have are split to the left and right, and we can have another split to the right like so. Okay, and then let's go back to the main line we deleted. I made sure to leave room for bridges there, and we can uh, connect it up pretty easily. Like so. And let's shorten this waiting bay. This is excessively long. We can see we have five tiles here. So we can have a signal there. And if we count this one, two plus two is four plus five. So we can have a signal there as well. So we can actually just merge it right at that point actually. And then on this side, we can count, see how much space we need. So five goes to there. So let's, uh, let's just, let's try a spot right here. I don't want to I don't want to merge it right here because then there's no room for a signal on those tracks. So we'll go one, one track further 
we'll see if this fits. So we have a signal there, so trains could stop here, one, two, plus three. So that's five, that's perfect. Um, and on this side, one plus three is four, so we actually need one more tile of space over here. So we can just move the split back a little bit. Not the prettiest thing ever, but it works. And we'll go back to the color scheme. And now it's time to add some signals. So waiting bay here, it'll end on the bridge, but there's no room for a signal here, so we gotta use a path-based signal there. Uh, this side, two plus five will end right there. See on here, two plus two is four, and five ends right there. And then over here, one plus four ends right there. So that is good. No room for block signals here, but we do have room for block signals on this side, and I do like to use block signals if I can. So we'll use them over here. And then the last thing to do is set up the priorities. So we'll have a two-way combo signal here, and then exit signals here. So then this whole pair of bridges will be one block and we can do that by using a path signal on the entrance so these connect. So the two bridges will be considered by one block for the priority. So that works. And then on this side we can just use a more conventional priority however we feel like. There we go. So that should be good. All right, time for the final merge and we can get even a bit fancier. So we can do the same as before where we give the straight tracks priority, but what we can do is start combining the different sections. So previously, so far we've kept everything nice and separate, which helps for uh, keeping everything straight in your head. But you know, since we've already done that a few times, let's go ahead and do something a bit fancier. So what we can do, since we have these bridges crossing the main line here, is instead of just having them recombine all boringly, we can uh, have them mix at this point before we even uh, reach the merger. So we're kind of combining the left turn bridges with the merge. So then if we move this track over, we can see at this point that uh, up between the, or these two input tracks, each of them has choice between these two uh, pairs of output tracks. All right, so now we can have these two merge with the left line and these two merge with the right line. So we're gonna need this main line to get out of the way. We're gonna need to find a way to cross, cross these tracks here. So again, we can, uh, we can start combining our bridges in clever ways. So if we just uh, have this main line go across here, then we can just make this bridge a bit longer and have it cross over and have another bridge there as well. So at this point we have all the tracks where they need to be. We just need to put in some curves so they don't have to turn really sharply. So let's see, we want curve length of three, curve length of three, and we'll have it merge together in a single point like so. And that works, we all have length three curves. And then this side we can deal with similarly. So we need a length three curve there, that barely fits. And then we can, uh, we can count this, we can do this a little differently. We can have a two stage one where we count out a waiting bay length here. So length five like so would work. And I guess it doesn't matter too much since you can see these waiting bays got really long. When they're, when they're this long, you don't really need to count the waiting bay lengths as long as, you, as long as the trains aren't backing up. They'll probably be waiting room space, so we don't really need to count too much. But here, I'll just say length five train, so the next train will be waiting at a signal right there or right there. So that works, so we have an extra waiting bay right there. And then this is, uh, this is pretty much good. We just need to put in the priorities.
All right, and there we go. That one went pretty smoothly, actually. So let's, uh, let's just fix the coloring a little bit. And there we go. At this point, let's add a few more signals there. At this point, the backbone hub is done. Well, this ended up being quite a long video, so congratulations on making it to the end. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.